Hello there, Ray here, and today I would like to talk to you about 1.14, an upcoming Minecon event. The Minecon event will be this Saturday, and during it, they're going to do similar to last Minecon, which they'll let the players vote on a new feature. So they're giving option of three different biomes that they're all going to upgrade, but only one of them will be upgraded first. So they give the option to the players to allow them to go ahead and choose which biome they want to upgrade. Now the three options that you have to vote from are the savanna, the taiga, and the desert. Now each of these biomes from the list are somewhat neglected and that's why they have probably chose them. They release short videos about each of the biome and some of the things that they may add if they take on that biome as being the one of choice. Now the main thing to take away from this is that those are not the only features that they're going to add if they take on that biome. I see a lot of people commented in the video saying, Oh, I don't want to, you know, let them do the desert because they're only going to add such things like a mongooses or palm trees. Now, talking to Rock and Roll for Life, one of the Minecraft developers, he made it really clear that whenever they take on a new project, they usually announce, like they're saying, okay, we're going to go work on the oceans. And as soon as they announce it, they get a whole bunch, like a huge flood of ideas coming from the community. So it's really important that once they announce whatever type of biome they're going to do, they're going to go and look at the community for different ideas to apply to that biome. So they might be looking on Reddit, or they might be looking on different suggestion pages, see what type of things that players might want for that biome. So it's really important that you don't think that they're just going to add a couple little features to that biome. They're really going to expand upon it as soon as they know what type of biome that they're going to do. This means as a committee, we can help influence what type of features will be added into these biomes. So as soon as they do announce what type of biome they're working on, you can go ahead and try to give them different ideas on what they should add into the biome. Now it's really important to make sure to give them concrete ideas that will be easily implemented, as well as giving unique ways for them to implement those ideas. From talking with Rock and Roll for Life, he made it really clear that it's not only important to have a bunch of different things to add into the game, but also to give them a purpose. So it's really a big deal for them to not only come up with a whole bunch of different things, you can't just say, okay, I want to have ostriches in the savannas. You need to kind of explain what kind of things these things will bring into the game and maybe some features that they'll come along with them. They're always looking for really cool or unique ways to add features that will kind of integrate with the rest of Minecraft. Now, polar bears are one of those mobs that is a bad example of this. When it was implemented, it didn't really integrate with other parts of Minecraft. It kind of just sat there. It didn't have a lot of features. They didn't really bring that much to the game. Now, something like hoppers, on the other hand, is a good example of how it integrates in with other parts of Minecraft and also offers a lot of things to the game. So just keep this in mind when you start giving suggestions to the Minecraft developers. That way they're not swamped with just a whole list of different mobs that they should implement into the game. Instead, give them some features that can go with those mobs as well as some depth so that they have like a storyline to go with them. Now at Minecon, they're also going to show a bunch of other things just besides the biome thing. They already got a bunch of stuff made already and they're going to show it off then. So what it is going to be, I'm not too sure. I know they made a whole bunch of different types of structures already. So maybe they're going to implement structures throughout across all the biomes or maybe they just got like this generalized structure that they're going to add maybe to the nether or something. So it'll be really cool to see what type of things they have been working on. Since they've been working on it for probably last couple months, they've had time to been working on the 1.14 after they kind of moved away from the 1.13. I asked Rock and Roll for Life some other questions, kind of about how they would implement different stuff and if they would concentrate in all parts of the community. And he said, yeah, it's really important for them for every time they do update, they're going to try to focus on giving every aspect of the community something new. And this might be something like the PvP might get something, the builders might get something new in it, as well as something like the command block guys will get something. And then like your map makers, even like the technical community might all get a little bit of something in this one update. Even though the update might be concentrated on one thing, let's say it's concentrated on this one type of biome, plus maybe like the savannah biome, then they're going to try to look in that type of category and find stuff that they can implement for each of the different communities. He also said that they don't want to have the different communities kind of scattered out throughout different versions. If they want to figure out why different communities are stuck in different versions, such as like the PvP community is kind of stuck back in like 1.8. And like the technical community is stuck in 1.12. And there's also like the map makers, which are really excited about like 1.13. So the idea is to give each of them something new so that they feel like they need to upgrade to like the newest version. That way they feel like they are actually part of the new version of Minecraft, not kind of lagging behind and not seeing some of those features. So it's really cool that they're doing this. I really find it it's a great way to bring the Minecraft community back together again. That way everyone's kind of on the same version and they kind of all have something new that they're excited about and they feel anxious to go ahead and upgrade to the next version. It's cool that they've chosen to spruce up each of these biomes because they're pretty barren. 
Now for the desert one, they showed a little clip saying that they may add meerkats as well as things such as palm trees into this biome. But as I said before, they're going to add a lot more depending on which biome they choose and what the players suggest to them. Now as you can see, currently in the desert, it is pretty barren. There is just mostly cactuses and sands. Now there are some unique features such as like the desert hills, which is a separate biome. There's also desert mountains, which they would also get upgraded while this desert gets upgraded. Now there are some structures in there as well. As you can see, there are the desert temples, which do offer loot and some other cool things. They're mostly hidden away, but usually each desert has at least one of these. And they're pretty cool once you do find them. There are also the floating sand structures that you can find in the desert, which I don't know if they really belong there, but they have been part of Minecraft for a long time. As well as the ones that if you upgrade them, such as this one, they'll fall down. Now the temples themselves could be upgraded to make them a lot nicer, even have some mobs maybe spawn inside them. I feel like they will do this if they do choose the desert biome to go after. Now the other main structure in the desert is the desert villages, which pretty much can be in any biome, but these guys are pretty cool because of their sandstone structures, and out here in the middle of the desert there's really not that much for them to do, but yeah, they still have their little guards and everything going on with them. Now the often forgot about structure in the desert is these fossils that you can find. They also appear in like swamps, but they're pretty cool, and they're very hard to find. As you can see, this one here is jutting out through a cave so that you can find it easily. And talking with Rock and Roll, he did find something like this with having fossils as a really cool structure to add into game. Because what it does is offer you a cool thing to come across, but it's not so apparent that you run into it all the time. And then when you do run into it, you oftentimes forget that it even exists. So we'll probably see more of these type of structures with 1.14. The last structure is usually the one that's always forgot, which is the desert wells, which are pretty useless. Now, some other cool things you can find in the desert is such as these naturally generating four tall cactuses. You can also find cactuses that are floating, meaning they don't have any blocks underneath them. Or you can find one that's right beside a block. This usually has to do with something generating underneath of it, such as like water generating underneath of it, or like a temple generating right beside it, or like a village. Now, the desert does have some unique mobs, such as the desert rabbits, which are the sand-colored ones, as well as the husk. I think it's cool that each biome does have some unique mobs to go with them, as long as there's not too many. Next biome that they showed in the video was the taiga. Now the taiga, they said that there may be some different types of mobs, such as foxes, what they showed. And they also said that there could be some structures, such as campfires, which I think are really cool. Now they also talked about having some fruits in here, being berries. And I think it's cool that they do add like some berry bushes with different types of fruit. But the main thing to know about this is that you don't want to have tons of types of food in Minecraft. There are already a lot of different types of food in Minecraft, and most of them are not even being used by the player. So one of the ideas that a lot of people have, and I've seen on Reddit, as well as I support, is the idea of giving different types of food unique effects. So maybe something like Golden Carrots would give you like a small speed boost, or something like that, or maybe even some new types of effects to go with different types of food, which would be really cool, and give them a actual use of players would actually use these different types of foods in their day-to-day -day Minecraft adventures. Now, Rock and Roll for Life did like this idea, but it's really up to the whole group to decide on how to implement this into the game. I think it'd be really cool if they would do this, but we'll have to wait and see what comes out of it. Now, for the mobs that are part of the taiga, like I said, the foxes, I think they're pretty cool. They weren't sure if they should make them hostile or tame. I think they should probably be hostile to start with because uh, most foxes in real life are hostile, and they are pretty difficult to tame. And for the campfires, I think they're really nice because they'll kind of go in with the other type of structures that you see in the taiga, such as here's the mega taiga where you see the different types of clumps of mossy stone. And I think if they had these kind of little campfires sitting around, maybe like a little tent to go with them and some other little things, looks like an old campsite that someone used to be. They also show like an old fallen over log that was in the back of the picture. I think it'd be cool if there was some fallen logs, not only in the taiga, but maybe in other biomes as well. Now, out of all the biomes, taigas actually have the most variations. There are the normal taiga, the mountain taiga, and then you also got the two different types of special taiga. These are the mega taiga, so you got the spruce uh, mega taiga as well as the normal mega taiga, which have the podzol and the rock structures, the mossy ones. And there are also the cold variation, which is like the snowy taiga and the mountain snowy taiga. So when they do implement these changes, they'll probably add them into every single different type of this taiga. The last biome to choose from is the savanna. For this one, they show the baobabs, which is a type of tree that could come with it, as well as ostriches and termite mounds. Having another tree type would be pretty cool. I've seen some of the modded tree types, and they do look like they're really nice to go with a lot of different types of textures. And for the termite mounds, I think it's a really cool thing that they don't really have too much like it in the game. We do have silverfish, which can go into types of blocks, but I think termites would be kind of cool if they would like take down some types of trees or eat on wood or something and infest other stuff. Maybe even having like a termite queen that comes out of the ground 
and that you could fight or something weird like that. And then with the ostriches, I think those are kind of one of those mobs that don't really have that much uses, similar to like the polar bears. So maybe they have to give them something really cool. Because, you know, we got a lot of mobs already that you kill them, they just drop something like feathers. You got like the parrots, and I feel like the ostriches may be the same thing. Now in the clip with the ostrich, it did show it sticking its head in the sand, which is just a myth in real life. They don't really stick their heads in the sand, which wouldn't be very helpful for them at all. Also, they show the meerkats being in the desert, and meerkats are actually more likely to be in savannah. But with such a large community, I'm sure they will get a lot of suggestions from everybody. Savannah is another biome that has villages capable of generating, which is kind of nice because it's the only structure that you'll find in savannah. For the most part, it's pretty desolate. Now, savannas as well as desert are kind of supposed to be this way. They're supposed to be kind of barren or deserted of any type of real tropical stuff, but they could come in and add some other things to kind of spruce it up. That's there is quite a bit of wildlife, especially on the savannah, and even the desert has a lot of nocturnal animals, you just don't really see them in the daytime. Now what the savannah does have going for it is the different types of variations of it. So it has a savannah, then they also have the plateau savannah, and then they also have the mountain savannah, and then there's a variation of the plateau and mountain put together. This ends up making some really cool terrain, and this is actually one of my favorite biomes inside of Minecraft. Now they now call these savannah mountains Shattered Savannah, and they are pretty cool because they can go up to Y level 200. And even though, like I said, the savannah doesn't have that much structures that go with it, they do have these really cool terrain, which I think kind of makes up for it. And it will be kind of interesting to see if they add any of the new features into this very tall terrain. I'd love to hear what type of biome you think should be upgraded next, as well as why, and what type of features you think they should add into that biome. Now, I personally think that maybe the desert be first, then the savannah, and then the taiga, mostly because the desert is just completely buried, and you do got some other interesting features in the savannah as well in the taiga that you just don't see in the desert. The main thing to keep in mind is that whatever biome they do decide to work on, they're not just going to add what they showed in the video, they're going to elaborate on that and add more things as well as what the community comes up with. And once they announce what 1.14 is going to be about, as well as what biome they're going to enhance, and that's your guys' turn to go ahead and give input on the different things. And they said they were even looking at YouTube videos and seeing what people say down in the comments, which is a really cool feeling of being able to help with the next update. I do enjoy making these more talkative videos, but I may make more in the future. If you want to learn more about Minecon, the links are down in the description. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you found this interesting, show me a like and share this with others. If you'd like to see more stuff like this about the 1.14 as well as updates to come, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions all about this down in the comments. Bail Babs!